What's up guys, Big Papa Drock back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Hope everyone's having a great day. It's a Friday when I'm recording this. And uh, big news guys, big news. They just released Xena Warrior Princess. I mean, holy smokes. I never in a million years thought this would happen. Super, super, super cool. Um, she is locked behind the premium battle pass, which is kind of a bit of a bummer. Uh, but still, always nice to have an option to get another another champion. And so I said, you know what? We got to get her. We got to max her out. And we got to test her right now. So I have done that. I have actually gotten the Xena. I've done the premium battle pass. Now, you might have seen uh, other creators talking about how the premium battle pass is not a good value. Um, and I can 100% agree with that. There is There is really not anything of value down here besides xena herself uh in all honesty the free battle pass that comes with this gives you better rewards than the premium one does that's crazy to me like that's definitely something right away that should be changed should be addressed as they do these going forward they're not going to change it now so there's no point in and even like asking them to but for the next one plarium you got to do better than this down here like these are these are not these are not good rewards guys not even a six star glyph i mean just just absolute trash you get much better rewards on the top but the difference of course with the premium is you do get the champion um so that is pretty cool and her kit on paper on paper looks really impressive and potentially a big counter to some major major meta champs so i have built her up i have yet to test her at all we're going to do that together i haven't even put her in anything um haven't even done it myself off camera so i have no idea what to expect but let's take a look right now at her kit now i have put her in my absolute bar none strongest gear that i have on this account i have stripped my georgid to make this happen um just so we can get her in the absolute strongest stuff now she's obviously not ascended because she just came out i don't have any soul stones and obviously we know how hard it is to get specific souls um but she is completely booked so i did completely book her she is in what i would consider god tier gear and she should hit pretty hard um so let's take a look at her skills so first and foremost on the a1 sword of redemption attacks one enemy two times will ignore three percent of the target's defense for each buff on the target will also ignore shield buffs is the if the target is under two or more buffs or debuffs that sounds like a pretty good a1 to me um I mean, ignoring defense, always super, super powerful. Getting that on the A1 is pretty awesome. And the fact that you have the ability to ignore shield buffs. All right, I, I can get down with that. That sounds like a really good A1. Um, can't complain. And it's a two hitter, which means you can get at least one hit through UDK's passive. So that's always a plus nowadays. We always want to see multi hits on the uh, A1 whenever possible. Let's take a look at the A2. Chakram Cyclone attacks all enemies. We'll ignore 5% of the target's defense for each buff on the target. Steals 20% of the turn meter from each enemy. This effect cannot be resisted if the target is under two or more buffs or debuffs. So again, like we're ignoring defense. Now we're stealing turn meter that can't be resisted if somebody has buffs up. That is awesome. Like for the arena, that immediately makes me think of, okay, Seafy, Duchess, Elva. Um, I mean, all of your meta support champions in live arena or classic arena even marichka are putting up a ton of different buffs um they're not necessarily getting debuffed very often because as we know polymorph exists and that's destroyed the ability to debuff people at least in high level arena but they are throwing up buffs all the time and the fact that she is getting a boost against that is awesome so on paper again sounds really good and sounds like something that counters those champions especially well let's look at the a3 whip of destiny love these names attacks all enemies will ignore 10 percent of the target's defense for each buff on the target resets the cooldown of the skill if it kills two or more enemies i mean again on paper sounds great sounds really good she's ignoring a ton of defense so now if you're going up against the Sifi, she's potentially ignoring as much as 30 percent of defense plus savage plus helm smasher right that's awesome and the fact that it resets the cooldown okay great super super great i'm loving that she is an attack based champion which makes it a little tricky versus you know taurus but we're about to get to her passive and that kind of solves a little bit of the problem 
but again like this this sounds like a really good ability i love the way this sounds really countering some of these support champs let's take a look at the passive because this is a little this is a little crazy for the greater good passive effect increases this champion's attack by 10 percent every time they use an active skill stacking up to 100 percent resets each round also has a 50 percent chance of randomly changing this champion's weak hits to normal strong or critical hits the chance increases to 100 percent when attacking enemies under two or more buffs or debuffs i mean those two things right there that is insane that sounds very much the first part of that sounds very much like karima's a2 increasing her defense every time it's used up to 100 percent. but this is even better because it works for either of her skills right and again this kind of counters taurus decreasing her attack with his passive which is broken as we all know so that's good so it makes her potentially super strong as a as a battle goes on and of course in arena there's only one round you're not resetting rounds in arena and then the fact that she has the ability to change her weak hits to normal strong or critical hits now this is really interesting and this is why i say she could be a duchess counter because her affinity is force which obviously is not good for duchess but duchess you know what i mean throws up a bump a bunch of buffs so now she has a chance to what always critical hit i i, I mean i'm really curious if that takes into account the fact that she has 100 percent crit rate because if it does that would mean that duchess's affinity doesn't matter she's always critting if she's built for 100 percent crit rate so again super great in the meta right now because everybody is throwing up buffs and you can't remove them because of polymorph if you try to strip them you're basically guaranteeing yourself getting sheep because Plarium doesn't uh, know how to actually make Polymorph uh, effective, which they should remove it. But anyway, we're not gonna get on Polymorph rant right now, I promise, I promise we'll do it. Let's take a look at the active effect because this is the other thing that makes her really interesting. Active effect of her passive fills this champion's turn meter by 100% and places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion for one turn whenever eight or more buffs are placed on the enemy's team in a single turn. That just screams Seafy counter right there, man. That screams Seafy counter. That screams Duchess counter. Uh, again, like I'm really curious to see how this works in 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 effect. Will it let her cut in, or does it not matter? Right? Because that's the big question here. It's an active effect. It can only happen once every three turns. But does it actually allow her to cut in line and potentially nuke a Seafy before anybody else on that team gets a chance to go? So we're gonna find out. Pretty good kit though on paper. Obviously the big question here is also multiples. I think they're like 4.0, 4.1. So they're not God tier amazing, which affects what she's able to do. But if she's ignoring a ton of defense and the enemy team doesn't have Harima, could be really powerful. Let's take a look at how we've built her. We've got her in Savage and Crit Damage gear. Um, again, this is like some of the absolute strongest gear I have on my entire account. Uh, well, you, we use the, the optimizer to make this happen you can take a look at the weapon the, sh uh, the helmet here we got the shield we got crit rate crit damage speed attack percentage i wanted to build her fast enough to where she could hypothetically cut in this is almost a god tier piece also oh imagine if this had rolled attack percentage on the ascension like oh would have been amazing and then we got the boots with attack percentage on it really wish this would roll more speed as opposed to defense but hey we'll take it um, for her uh, her accessories, we've got lots of speed. Um, we got, you know, crit damage with crit damage ascension. We've got attack percentage. These aren't even really all that crazy down here. I don't have super amazing barbarians accessories, but let's take a look at the total stats, right? So total stats, this is an unascended champion. This is a baseline Xena. She's rocking over 7,000 attack, over 300 and like, 319% crit damage while still having respectable speed. Now, the biggest thing that I see as a potential massive downfall for this champion in arena is she is a absolute glass cannon. She has very low HP, very you know mediocre defense, not even super high attack, right? So, and she doesn't have any way to stay alive. Like if you look at Georgid, if Georgid kills someone with his, with his A3, he gets an unkillable. Um, if Leorius is in there, Leorius has swift parry built in. Taurus, Taurus, you can't kill because of his passive that negates a ton of damage from skills. So all of the meta nukers or people like Harima or defense-based nukers are all extremely hard to kill normally. This champion does not have that. 
and that is a major, major downside to her. Now, she does have that potential to increase her speed a crazy amount, and she could do a lot of damage, but I don't know. Let's find out. So that's how we built her. Let's take a quick look at Masteries. You can see here the Masteries. Let me slide my camera over to the right. Take a quick little peek there. So we got Helm Smasher on her. I kind of went like, this is a little different than normal, but I went with Wisdom of Battle just for whenever a Seafy does hit me, if I get a chance to potentially put a block debuffs up afterwards. So, you know, just mixing it up here. We still got counter attack. I could have gone double counter attack, but I went with the A1 methodical just to increase her A1 damage because it did sound like a pretty decent A1 with that ignore defense ability. So I did want to increase the damage on that. But pretty much your typical stuff now. Ruthless ambush. I went cycle of violence here. So if she does a ton of damage, she might be able to get her skills back. Um, but nothing too crazy here. So let's take her to arena. Let's see what she, or not arena. Let's take her into dungeons first. The hardest thing about testing her though is going to be the fact that I I can't, I'm not gonna be able to get buffs on the enemy most likely to really get a real read on her damage. Um, so that's tough. I don't know. I don't know if, why am I trying to look for her by hand instead of just using the filter? I do this every time. All right, here we go. Xena, let's see what we can do here. We'll test her out just normally um, with increased like, increase attack now keep in mind again she's not getting the ignore defense of the enemy team having buffs here so i do not like this is not going to hit nearly as hard as it could as a result so just be aware of that um all right let's start with the a2 because this ignores less less defense no matter what so let's just see what the a2 does this does steal to a turn meter as well okay 221 I mean, that's not bad. That's pretty solid, I would say, considering that it's not ignoring um, all of uh, the the defense and it stole all that turn meter. Look at that. She's she's basically ready to have another turn right now. So that's actually pretty sick. I mean, we'll go ahead and just dump out the A3 here anyway. Again, same thing. Not Look at the animations on this. Animations look sick. So look, she's not hitting super hard on either of those abilities without them having buffs, unfortunately. Let's... Like she's hitting fine. She's hitting okay. Um, you really want to see that more like 280, 290, 300K plus damage. Let's see if we can get them to put some buffs on themselves. I don't know even if they'll do that, but we'll just test out the A1 here. See what the A1 does. Two hit, 97, 97. That's really good. We'll take that. We'll take that. Our, my Arbiter. <laughs> Arbiter coming through with some clutch hits. <laughs> All right, let's see. Who puts up buffs? I can't remember. I don't know if we're going to be able to get around to it, but we're going to try. Uh, assuming Dragomorph doesn't kill everybody. We'll just, uh, here, here, kill. 82, 80. All right, not bad. The double hitter. Okay. She's lost her, she's lost her increased attack here. But let's see. Does she die? She's actually just going to die. So none of this even matters. They're not getting buffs anyway. This is pointless. <laughs> this is entirely pointless. Uh, all right. I, I think realistically, it's just going to be too hard to test her, to test her ability to do more damage on this. I don't want to wait around for it. So what we're going to do is just take her into arena. Let's take her into classic arena, and we might even do a live arena battle and see what she does in arena if we can find a Seafy team or even a Duchess team. Because I think both of those teams will be very, very helpful to understand what is going on here. So we got a Duchess team here decent power level as well let's try with this so let's start here with and i don't want to actually use the yumiko because i don't want to shut them down so we're going to start with i'm trying to think of who like who else would keep her alive better um because i want i need as much shield as possible against our boy taurus so i'm going to go with i think my lydia is built in a boister a bolster set right now so with, we'll go with lydia just to get additional survivability and then again let's go xena here and we're gonna give them a turn and see if it lets her do more damage and or let her cut in. And actually, honestly, I feel like we should take the Arbiter out. If we take the Arbiter out, does that increase her speed? Because I really wanna get a, an idea of exactly how fast she is. So we're gonna take the Arbiter out and we're gonna put one of my slower Duchesses in here um, instead of like the super fast one that I usually use for live readings. So we're gonna put my plus two Duchess in here and see what happens. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to slow this down just so we get a really good idea of the effect. 
Turn meter seems whatever, seems normal. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we'll just put these buffs up on the Duchess right now. Again, I wanna see what happens if she gets, well, she's already got her turn. Um, so she's already out outsped basically everybody. Let's see, okay. They've got a lot of buffs up. I don't wanna steal turn meter yet right now. Let's see what the, what the A3 does, yeah? Pass has already been used. Okay, passive's already been used actually, right? Did she get an increased attack buff? She did. So passive's already been used. So let's see what the A3 does right here. And let's see if this, if this, uh, this has what? Chance, she has a chance to not, um, to not weak hit there. So this should be a crit, I believe, on the Duchess. Yes, it was a crit. Okay, okay. Not bad. Not bad. Not like great, I'm gonna be honest. Not super great. A little underwhelming uh, from the perspective of doing damage. Like you can see if, if I'd had a Taurus or something like that there, I mean, they're gonna get absolutely hammered. Let's see what the A1 does. Hey, A1 hitting pretty hard. Okay. That was a nice A1. That was a quality A1. All those buffs were ignoring a lot of defense on that A1. That, that reminds me of like a really strong Helicath A1. So that was that was actually impressive. All right, let's see now. We should still turn meter here. Can't be resisted, so should still Mirth Mithrala's turn meter as well. See what the A2 does. We did. We got more turn meter. Okay. All right, we're going to speed it up now. Let's go auto, see how it does. Ally attack. This should kill the Duchess. So again, not... Doesn't look like it's weak hitting. No weak hits there, even though the affinity... And that could be due to the passive. Hold on. I don't want to try to we'll go back around. This might turn her to stone, but let's give it a go. All right. I mean, not bad. It's not bad. It's not like God tier. You know what I mean? It's not Taurus. It's not Georgid. Um, in terms of damage, but I will say her ability to just gank turn meter is interesting. Like the ability to steal turn meter, very interesting. I really want to test her against a Seethi, against a fast team, and see if she's able to just completely cut in. I think she can, because I feel like she cut in there. Let's try, let's try the A1 on Taurus. Ooh, yes. Now that's nice. Now keep in mind. Taurus's passive only reduces damage from skills. So her A1 on a buff Taurus actually cooks pretty darn well. Like that was good. That was meaty. That was a meaty, a meaty attack there. All right, let's get her against a Seafy. All right, we got a Seafy here. Ah, I don't want to have the Yumika though. We got a Seafy here though. This is perfect. And a Taurus Marichka. Can't get more meta than this. This is great. Um, we're going to actually switch now to the better Duchess. We'll keep, <laughs> if she, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to like live through this nuke, but we're gonna keep, we'll keep the Lydia in here. I don't even know if this team lives through this nuke. I'm gonna get absolutely just blasted uh, massively. Okay, look at that. She cut right in, just jumped all the way up. As soon as the Seafy did her stuff, she cut right in. So let's actually hit them now. Let's hit them with the turn meter steal, yeah? Because look, we got four buffs up. Let's hit let's hit the turn meter steal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, go off, queen. Now, I think, was that a reaction? I don't know if that was reaction prof. I, a proc. I was too excited by the damage on the Seafy. But she did actually cut in. Let's... Hey, we survived. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> Bolster forever. She's gonna get nuked so hard here though. Okay, hold on. I mean, Taurus Risk is still absurdly broken. All right, A3, they've got so many buffs up. And again, this is ignoring 10% of defense for each buff on the target. So this this is like 10, well, it won't matter against Stone Skin, but 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 plus Savage. This is ignoring 100% of defense, I think. Let's see. 
cooked the siffy. Just absolutely cooked them. <laughs> All right, that's pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, also just nuked the Marichka hard. Didn't do a ton of the Taurus again because it's a skill. It's a skill, but that, that I mean, that did some nasty damage right there. That did some nasty, nasty damage. I'm actually going to throw up this buff. All right, let's go back. She's going to die right here, but let's go back. This is the A2 again. We're ignoring defense again. I mean, all things considered, she's not bad. She's not bad. Again, her biggest problem is how do you keep her alive? Like, she is so squishy. She's so squishy, and she's not like... Oh, look at the damage on the A1. Holy hell. Look at the A1 damage. And it wasn't a freaking weak hit. Are you kidding me? You basically have to have her with a Necrit or she is essentially worthless. Unless you're just, unless like nobody has reaction. That A1 is legit though. Holy hell. That A1 does not screw around. That A1 smacks. Let's do the C3 with the A1. Oh my God. What a bonkers A1. I mean, like what? All right, nuke again. Yeah, I mean, she's so easy to kill. She's so easy to kill, man. But she's fun. She's fun. She's fun. Taurus Marishka, though, are still God tier. Like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? They're still they're still the undisputed, just unstoppable, uh, you know, menaces in arena. And she's not going to change that, I don't think. But if someone is not using Taurus and Marichka, or if you're in live arena and you're banning one of them, then maybe there's some real use case here. Let's get the buffs up again. Again, we're going to hit with A2. I mean, the damage is there. We lost this one. The damage is there. The damage is real. All right. Let's take her in a live arena. Let's do like one live arena battle and see how she does. Let's take, let's, let's jump in there with one and see if we can actually get, get her not to be, uh, oh, perfect. It's Bobby. Great. We got, we got a God tier, uh, a God tier opponent. Phenomenal. Couldn't ask for a better one. Um, I'm going to roll Seafy and I'm going to roll. We'll go Marichka. Seafy Marichka or Seafy Duchess, actually. I'm going to go Seafy Duchess. I'm going to give him the duo. This is a horrible idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. I technically should have not gone Seafy because I wanted to get the buffs, but this is the weird thing about having her because I need Seafy to stay alive. Now, I know Bobby has a disgusting, filthy. Um, uh, whatchamacallit, I think Crutraxa. So we're, we're, we're absolutely going to lose this battle. I can pretty much guarantee it right now. Um, but let's, for the memes, he's going to go Crutraxa, I'm sure. Let's bring in, where is she? Xena. Why am I not just doing this like this? Actually, no, hold on, hold on. Let's bring in Shuzen. Yeah, let's, let's try to actually, let's try to win this. Unlikely that we will, but let's try. He gonna go Marichka or is he gonna go uh I'll laugh if he picks Xena. I mean there's no way he would. He's trying to actually win. He's not throwing. We're throwing basically right now. We're throwing. But I have to know. He'll pick Krutraxa. He'll pick maybe Georgia Krutraxa or just or just Krutraxa. Let's see. Let's see. Don't worry, Bobby. This is a this is a showcase. You don't have to fear, buddy. I'm not busting out Georgia or anyone too too scary. We're just pulling out Xena Warrior Princess. Oh God, the Helicath. Of course. Of course, the Helicath. My least favorite champion in Arena. Clearly the most annoying champion that's ever existed. All right. 
I want to make sure she can use her skills. So I'm going to ban the Yumiko. Hopefully Bobby realizes this is just me testing out Xena, but I'm sure he's, you know, he's looking to bury me like anyone else would. So let's see who he bans. I would imagine he bans Harima. Yep. That's about what I expected. So no surprise there. Now she is going to get, I think because of the Necro, her, her turn meter should zoom up right away, right? Let's take a look. Well, we sheeped. I wonder if her turn meter actually increases or may, oh, no, maybe it doesn't off the, off the top. Hmm. Okay. All right. We need multi hits. Neither of these are going to, but they're going to still turn meter. So let's go ahead and drill. I mean, she's about to get absolutely toasted by the helicath every time she hits. We're just, we're asking. Ooh, actually, you know what? Instant turn. She's going to lose this. He can, he can annihilate her. Screw it. Let's just go for it. Taurus is back now. Again, we're taking a loss here for sure. Nothing she is doing right now is super impressive though, right? Like... We're not super impressed by what we've seen so far, for sure. And Helicath, always an absolute menace. Xena should die here. He might just try to kill the uh, Duchess. Or the Seafy. He should be able to kill any of them. Yeah, not surprised by that whatsoever. Okay, we did get block active skills. Uh, I mean, again, we're, we're definitely going to lose this. There's block damage on all of them. Helicath coming in, cooking. No point in doing anything here, right? The A1 doesn't ignore anything. Ignores shield buffs. But nothing else. So she's definitely, I mean, she's going to die here for sure. Like, Helicath is going to just absolutely nuke her. Really? Okay. I'm surprised by that. I'm actually genuinely shocked by that. Like, really? Okay. She'll die here, though. She, she definitely died here. No nukes necessary, so res. Okay, okay. If I, I mean, there's no way I'm gonna win this. But if I were to manage to win, I would be absolutely shocked. I don't have a Rotos counter. They still have this, the, 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 okay, the Necrot actually went. The Necrot went. Bro, that A1 does hit legitimately hard though. Holy hell. That thing really does hit hard. Wanted to decrease my attack versus Yeah, yeah, this is this is going about how we thought it would. Uh, who do we bring back? If I bring back Duchess, I kind of have to, right? Don't really have a choice. And his uh his necker is just eating me alive here. So again, like you can see 
you can see in the meta, she's still not going to be like competitive with stuff um, like whatchamacallit, like Taurus, Marichka, any of these champs. She's just not going to be able to compete. So we lost, as expected. But again, interesting to see her kit, right? I think... I think she is more viable in maybe Classic Arena in some ways. I mean, maybe Live Arena if you're lower level and you're not facing these monster teams all the time. But like, put it like this. Would I pick her in high-level arena over a Taurus, over a Georgid, over a Ragash, a Rhodos? Probably not. Probably not. If she had something in her kit that kept her alive, then, then maybe something different. You know what I mean? If she could get an unkillable buff, if she could get some type of, of you know, block damage ability, or if I have her with a Necrit, if you pair her with a Necrit, then maybe she is more viable. But I think without the Necrit, without the way to protect her, because even here we have the Duchess, and it's still just really tough. All right, I don't know why Bobby is sitting here, but I thought he just finished me off. But anyway, interesting to see. Like, she's an interesting champ. She's, she's this close to being, I think, really, really good. And I think for certain teams, she definitely has a place if they have a bunch of... You know, like like that team we just faced, pretty much worst case scenario for her because Hellcath is going to drill her when you hit with block damage. She doesn't have a way to go through that. Um, Rodos is also always scary. And again, like you're sacrificing the real meta champs in order to use her, which I think is the problem. But all in all, is she solid? I would say she's solid. I would say she's solid. And I think she might be like, useful in specific cases when someone has a team that is throwing up asinine amounts of buffs and also is not using Taurus and Marichka because against Taurus and Marichka, she is an absolute just, I think, liability, again, without a Necrit, which is the hardest thing to guarantee in Live Arena is what champs are, are not going to be banned. So there you go. We took a good look. Nice little showcase. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are going to going to get her. Are you going to get the premium battle pass in order to snag her? Or is this a pass for you now that you've seen kind of what, what she can do? I'm trying to find her here quickly, but, uh, you know, just to put her up one last time. But, yeah, I'm really curious to hear what you guys think, if she's someone that you would end up going for or not. But, yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the showcase. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. I will see you soon. And as always, Big Papa Drock, out!